Good morning, everybody. I see it was a good social. Um, um, my name is Emil Aben. Uh, I work for the RIPE NCC. Uh, I do research and development. Uh, so that's making ideas we get, have internal to the RIPE NCC and also from our community into a reality. So it's uh, prototyping of these things. So if you have interesting research ideas, please come approach us. Um, and yesterday I already had some, some nice inspiration from, uh, from some people here. So uh, thanks for that already. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is um, a measurement study we're doing with RIPE Atlas on keeping local traffic local. Um, yeah, okay, yes. Um, <clears throat> so keeping local traffic local, that's what you hear quite often in the context of uh, creating IXPs. Um, but let's for a minute go back to why we actually want to do this. And the uh, first thing here is cost. And uh, there was a lightning talk yesterday uh, talking about energy costs, for instance, but there's all kinds of monetary costs for um, uh, if you have a packet that has to travel within your country, um, why would you send it to uh, big places, uh, to, to faraway places uh, that costs infrastructure, that's uh, probably transit costs versus um, uh, keeping stuff local, which uh, 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 could be peering. So generally, um, keeping it local keeps your costs low. Um, the other one is service quality. If you have multiple parties involved in bringing your packet from A to B in the same country or in the same city even, um, that's multiple parties, multiple handoff points where things can go wrong. So, um, and it adds latency of course. So if you keep stuff local, that means your service quality is likely improving, uh, which means happy users. And we all want users ha as happy as, as, as she is. Um, the other point is security. And that maybe uh, was maybe less relevant before Snowden. Uh, but with Snowden, um, people start to be very uh, cautious about things going through certain countries uh, where uh, surveillance takes place. Uh, so that, that's another reason. So that's the first part. The second part is RIPE Atlas. So who here doesn't know RIPE Atlas? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep that very brief. So we, we have uh, uh, quite a nice uh, coverage of uh, measurement points. Uh, so it's, it's a measurement project for the community, by the community. It's these, these little devices. Uh, and this is a map of where they are deployed. So if you look all the way up north there, there's even one in, uh, in Svalbard, in uh, all, almost the North Pole. Um, so each of these dots is actually something like this. And this is the actual probe in, uh, uh, connected in Svalbard. So these are actual devices that you can use to measure the internet and that we use uh, to measure the internet. Um, a little, little bit more about um, uh, nice big numbers. Uh, and, and Vesna talked about that yesterday a little bit on the mic already. Uh, 270 of these, it's 1U devices that you, uh, are like, uh, very stable um, and do more measurements. Um, we're in 179 countries, 91% of all countries, 6% um, of IPv4 networks and 9% uh, of IPv6 uh, networks have at least one RIPE Atlas probe uh, deployed in them. So that's, uh, I think that's pretty impressive numbers, but we can always do better. Um, so if we combine these two things, keeping local traffic local and RIPE Atlas, um, or can we actually combine them? So, and this, this was like a, a research idea and um, the short question is yes, or the short answer is yes, we can actually do this. Um, but there are many, many challenges uh, left that we are currently exploring. Uh, there's, there's some in, in, in appendix, uh, but there's all kinds of things with uh, geolocation accuracy, um, uh, how representative is, is a single probe of uh, a larger network. It's all these types of questions that we're actively uh, uh, looking into. Um, that said, um, th the measurement project that we have is called IXP Country Jedi. Um, so what we're actually doing is uh, 
looking at questions like, are the path between two ASs that are, have a local presence in a country, uh, the path between them, um, do they stay in the country? Do we, or do we see them uh, going outside of the country and, and going back again? Um, do we see a difference between IPv4 and IPv6? Um, do we see path going through the local IXP or not? Um, and for network operators, uh, are there networks in my country that I could peer with uh, to improve uh, reachability or uh, change configuration uh, to improve things, to make things better? Um, and as I already said, this is an experimental tool. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's a prototype uh, and um, uh, it heavily depends on the measurement points. Uh, and I'll, I'll get back to that uh, uh, a little later. Of course, feature requests are welcome and we're very open to that. Um, so let's focus on Montenegro for a moment. Um, if you look, I, I don't know if the map is very well visible in the, uh, in the room, but if you, if you look at the map, all of the probes are in uh, Podgoric Podgorica. I, ho I hope I got the, uh, the pronunciation right. Um, so um, that's what we're current. That's what we're able to measure currently. Um, but there's uh, other places. Uh, well, we're in Budva here. Uh, Nikšić. Uh, I've been told is the second uh, largest city. Um, and there's rural areas. Uh, how is the internet here different in rural areas than in, uh, in, in cities? It's all these types of questions that we can only uh, look for answers if we actually have uh, measurement devices deployed there. Um, so that's sort of a, like a geographic look onto how you could actually uh, look at, these, uh, at the distribution of these, these, these little devices. Um, another look is uh, where are your end users actually? And so we have a research intern, uh, uh, Petros Gikis from, uh, from Greece, who's actually looked into this. And um, um, what he did was take um, market share estimates, and that's our colleagues from, uh, from APNIC and other RIR uh, provide these estimates, uh, and we believe them to be roughly correct. Um, and see, with these estimates, uh, you, you know which networks have the, the largest number of end users in, in a country. And then we look at, uh, do we actually have RIPE Atlas probes deployed in them? Um, and for Montenegro specifically, um, we didn't see them uh, in these networks. We actually had one in, uh, in Telenor, but it, it, um, uh, we couldn't get any, any uh, useful measurements uh, out of that device, so uh, we didn't count it. Um, so if you want to see this for your, if you're not from Montenegro, if you want to see this for your, uh, your own country, in the first URL, replace the ME there with your country code, and you can actually see um, what it looks like for your country. Um, and so the, the open question is, uh, can we get these probes deployed in these networks? Can you help us out in doing that? So uh, at the service desk, uh, I have two of my, uh, uh, my lovely colleagues who, um, who have the same interface and uh, if you approach them in the break or later during the day, uh, they will try to help and see if, if you have some specific networks that, uh, that are in this list um, uh, or if you have places where you can put these probes that are not uh, Podgorica, um, they will be very happy and we will be very happy and you'll be helping out our measurements efforts in um, uh, if you could deploy the probes there. Um, we have a platform called RIPE Labs where we, where we uh, put out uh, articles, blog posts about our research activities and um, ab about this specific interface, there's a, a nice uh, article uh, at the bottom link in this, uh, uh, on this slide. So now we covered the, 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 the probe coverage. Um, so the tool itself, the, the tool to measure between these probes, between uh, uh, the probes in a specific network, or in a specific country. Uh, this is the, the URL there, so it's on GitHub. You, if you have, uh, if you wanna do stuff with it, uh, you can run it locally. And uh, Daniela, for instance, uh, yesterday, I was really happy to see that he's, uh, he's been using it, and we've been using it to fix peering in the Middle East. So I'm, I'm really happy that this is, uh, um, uh, it's, it's so open, so anybody could, could use this uh, 
uh, change it to their specific situation. Uh, and there's also a Ripe Labs article about it, uh, which is the second link here. So the tool itself, let's, let's dig into the nitty gritty details of what it's actually doing. So we're doing a trace route mesh. So a trace route, uh, so you, you detect the path between point A and point B, uh, where A and B both are Ripe Atlas probes. So I have uh, a Ripe Atlas probe in uh, one network in a country, a Ripe Atlas probe in another network in a country. We look at the path uh, and for each hop we detect, is it an IXP hop? Um, so do we see the, the, the peering LAN of an IXP there? And the other one is, can we geolocate uh, the IP address of the hop? And um, for the IXPs, we use PeeringDB. It's like the, the open, um, uh, it's an open database and we like open and transparent. So uh, we are really encouraging people to put peering LANs and um, um, uh, other information that's useful uh, in PeeringDB because that helps other people see your networks. Um, and actually for, uh, for the local IXP MIXP, um, uh, yesterday I sat uh, with uh, Alexandra from uh, mix so we actually fixed uh, uh, the IXP, the mix uh, entry for peering DB, so we can automatically detect it now. So we're really making uh, uh, progress there. Um, so we do this mesh, uh, we do maximum two probes uh, per uh, autonomous system, so because uh, we have very large networks like Deutsche Telekom that have hundreds of probes, so you would not want that to that network to uh, uh, dominate the, the, the measurements that you're doing. Uh, we do this on public probes with good geolocation uh, and the geolocation of the intermediate hops we do with open IP map, which is a tool we built ourselves, which is the crowd, which is crowdsourcing of uh, uh, internet infrastructure IP addresses. So the IP addresses of a router, how do you uh, translate that to uh, a city uh, is, is, is what we're currently using because if you use an open database like MaxMind um, that gives you all kinds of weird and uh, interesting results that are uh, definitely not true. Um, what we do with all this measurement data, so these, these paths, is we visualize it as a map, as a matrix and as a, as a graph uh, and I'm going to show the, the examples. So why are we doing this? There's a lot of stakeholders here that we, we're trying to target. For a country, it's regulators, politicians, cybersecurity. So how much does stay in a country? And if they don't stay in a country, where do they go? Operators, it's about routing and traffic optimization. It's showing um, where potential stuff can uh, be improved. IPv6 advocates, it's comparing IPv4, IPv6. Um, the IXP operators is to sh actually show the benefit of an IXP and uh, help show the benefit of an IXP in keeping local traffic local. Um, for the Ripe Atlas community, we want the whole community uh, uh, of people using this measurement network to have the best uh, measurement network possible, so that that's why we want to deploy probes uh, in as many places as possible. Um, and the tool is also a use case for improving the data quality of uh, infrastructure geolocation, IP infrastructure geolocation. So let's drill, drill down to the, to the local country here, Montenegro. Um, what we do is we do this, we run this tool every month for all the, the countries where we have enough probes. So uh, on this URL, replace ME with your local country if you want to see all these visualizations for your local country. Um, the, the, the one that's on the, on, the, uh, on the screen here is the ASs, the, the networks that we detect uh, in Montenegro when doing this mesh of measurements. So. Um, I don't know if the, 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 there's three white points, which, which are the three networks that we have currently covered in Montenegro, and all the points in between are uh, uh, the autonomous systems, the networks that uh, provide the interconnection there. Um, so this is a matrix visualization of the same data. Uh, what you see here is the rows are the, uh, the sources. So these are individual Ripe Atlas uh, probes. The destinations are the columns. And so each cell is a source destination combination. Uh, and we color them based on certain properties of the path 
and we actually use two properties. One is, do we see a local IXP? Um, uh, and the other property is, uh, do we see the path go out of country and back for two points in Montenegro? Um, so it's two times two, it's four combinations. So um, uh, red means it goes out of country and we didn't see an IXP, didn't see a local IXP. And you actually see two examples of that. Um, um, green would mean it's, it's not visible on, on this one, but that means there's a local IXP detected and we don't see uh, the path go out of country. So that's uh, from an IXP perspective, that's you want to see a lot of green here. Um, the orange is we didn't detect an IXP, we also didn't detect uh, uh, a path going out of country. So it could be a direct interconnect uh, or a, a local uh, transit network uh, involved maybe. Uh, we are doing work to actually dis distinguish these. Um, but this was a situation um, um, uh, last, last week is, is, is when, uh, when, when uh, this visualization was there. Um, Actually, if you go to the website, this is uh, an interactive tool. Uh, again, this is a prototype. We could have our inferences wrong. So what, what I find really important is um, being able to actually verify if the data underneath this is, uh, is good. So if you click on one of these in the, in the interactual visualization, you'll actually see the trace route path uh, involved. And um, well, it's, it's a bit small here, but you can actually see that uh, we detected uh, one hop in Frankfurt uh, in Germany. Um, but I knew there was a local IXP here, uh, so I, I was wondering, uh, we should be able to detect that. And um, the problem here in detecting it was that the peering DB entry wasn't there. So after the fix that Alexander did uh, uh, yesterday, this is what it looks like now. So we can actually see this green thing here, this green uh, dot is a mix keeping local traffic local. So, uh, and that's why it's important to keep uh, peering DB, uh, your peering DB entries uh, up to date. And you can actually also see it in the, um, uh, in the AS uh, graph visualization. Um, and hopefully if we have more of the, 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 the eyeball networks, and the end user networks, this would, also, would extend into a, a greener matrix, which would show uh, mix uh, keeping local traffic local. So and this is the geographic view, the, 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 the two red cells uh, here, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure if you can see the, uh, the, the lines, but there are lines going to Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Budapest, Belgrade for the two, um, uh, the red cells, the ones that uh, send the traffic uh, to far, far away places to come back. So, and actually, if you look back, these were all probes in Podgorica, Podgorica. so this is Podgorica to Podgorica traffic going very, very far and coming back again. Five minutes, okay, so uh, what we can also do with the tool is measure uh, pairs of countries. Um, so uh, I, I created a snapshot of this, um, here's the URL. So what I did with this was uh, measure Montenegro and its neighbors. Um, and so this is Montenegro, Albania and it uh, uh, kind of looks like uh, uh, Daniela's presentation yesterday. It goes all across the place. Um, Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina goes all across the place. Montenegro, Serbia goes all across the place. And this is, and, um, um, this is not uh, very uh, strange, or you see this all over the world, that uh, as soon as you uh, look at neighboring countries, that uh, it's not, uh, neighboring countries directly, uh, you don't see direct path, uh, stuff goes uh, abroad uh, very often. Yeah? <laughs> so, um, next one, Montenegro, Croatia. Um, but if, if you just compare it, this to, um, uh, so it's, it's, it's not a, a, a strange thing, and this is a potential for uh, keeping local traffic local, keeping local stuff local to the region, uh, where you look at, at your neighbor countries and see what things you can do with your neighbor countries. Because um, it's very different from if you just take a vehicle. So this was the trip that uh, I did last Sunday uh, from uh, Dubrovnik 
to, uh, to here, which is very, uh, I mean, it takes two hours, so it's not milliseconds like internet packets, but it's, it's more efficient in uh, direct distances. So um, why do these paths actually, the internet path actually look like, like this? Um, and this, this is just my, what, what I think, and I, I'd, I'd be happy to hear uh, um, if, if this is correct or not. So internet routing isn't vehicle routing. Uh, we're pretty clear about that. Um, what I think is happening is that if people do BGP optimizations, it's mostly based on the high cost, so the high volume traffic flows. So operators typically uh, optimize for the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons, the Microsofts, uh, and these networks also optimize uh, for network operators. So what's left is a very long tail of, of um, um, potentially high value but low, uh, low volume uh, and user tra uh, traffic. <coughs> could be like real-time traffic. Um, um, and then the, 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 the latency and locality of these networks is, is, uh, not, is accounted for in BGP a little bit in, in AS path length. Um, but that, that's about it. Um, so what you really have to do is to get to, to peer with local players, to shorten your AS path, uh, add an IXP or do direct interconnects. Um, and if you don't, then stuff goes through, through, through transits and they just connect where they interconnect, right? So um, let me finish with, uh, uh, yes. Uh, potential actions that people can take. Uh, um, you can use this tool to find suboptimal routing. Uh, you can uh, go to the visualizations and uh, figure out where your AS is in, is in this system if you have a probe in the, in, 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 uh, in, in the, in the network. Uh, find other people that have probes and uh, have tea together and uh, try to, f to see uh, if there's things that you can fix. Um, well, we know there's, there's some uh, accuracy uh, issues uh, with these tools. So, uh, for instance, if your AS is not on the graph, please go uh, and, and you want uh, to have this data about your network, uh, please go talk to the, the people that have these probes. Come talk to me, come talk to uh, other people here. I know Vesna has probes with her, um, but other ripe NCC staff can help you with this. Um, if you have a probe and you move, you, uh, it's, it's also nice if you update the probe's location, because then we, uh, we make this tool uh, most accurate. Um, then again, this is open uh, software, uh, it's free, uh, just so use it, abuse it any way you want. Um, and on the infrastructure, if you have ideas on how to improve that or want to contribute there, uh, we're also very open to that. So that ends my presentation. Um, Okay, perfect. I, I see a stop sign, so I'm, I'm just going to ask for questions. Any questions? Hi. Dušan Lučković, University of Niš, Serbia. Uh, please tell me, is there some general plan for the replacement of the older generation probes, uh, which showed a little bit unreliable lately? Because you need to bear in mind that as uh, Atlas ambassadors from the non-EU countries, we are basically smuggling probes in and out of the country every yeah. time there's a conference. So yeah, yeah. A any plan for a statement of maybe virtual appliances or something, that would be very helpful. Uh, th there's a, a plan for a virtual uh, appliance uh, that's uh, being worked on. Um, also, the older uh, probes, uh, we, we know there are issues, so um, um, yeah, for the, the smuggling or the having to smuggle, I, I don't have a good solution for that except for uh, fixing international borders, but that's not in my control. So, uh, no borders. yes, see, uh, but, but then it becomes physical and uh, it has borders again, so. Um, yeah, that, 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 that is an issue. I, I, I can only acknowledge that and we're, we're, we're trying to, uh, well, we try to come to local meetings like this, bring probes um, to, to alleviate that a bit. Um, what about virtual appliance? Yes, that's, that's uh, okay. I heard virtual appliance twice. I will, I will surely report back that that was a, a 
there interest was, in it. That, there, that there's interest in that, yes. Yeah. So, thank you, Emil. My name is Michael Ogea. I'm an independent consultant. Um, so, and, and I do have a right probe, by the way, so I, I'm speaking on as a, as a uh, host. I actually have many suggestions and comments. Uh, the okay. first one is about the IXP Country Jedi. Uh, per, I, I'm probably I might be the only person in here that's not a technical person, um, and I really love the IXP Country Jedi concept. I have no idea how to implement it. I, I, uh, I don't know how to. Sorry if I'm losing respect, but I have no idea. I don't really know how to download it and use it. I've tried. It's really difficult. I've, okay. I so a question, a concern that I or like a suggestion maybe would be. I've always I thought that when I looked for it, it would some kind of visualization would come up on the website that I could then kind of play around with. And I actually think that would be a really good way to engage with uh, non-technical stakeholders yeah. that, you know, want to learn about how tra traffic is moving, especially people within, you know, actually within any stakeholder group. So that's one suggestion for that. Then with the probes, um, I had... Um, I had a comment that uh, actually uh, it was a thread that I had initiated a couple days ago about uh, about credits um, because, for instance, I had you know, a lot of credits that I didn't even know what to do with, and it makes me think that a lot of people. I, I know this because I've been talking to people. There are those who want credits who can't get them now. Now I've set it up in such a way that I, I transfer my credits every time it hits a million to a few different people who requested them, but. I'm, it makes me wonder if there's 10,000 probes, how many of those people that have those probes are actually using those, the, those measurement credits and uh, how many people might be able to use those credits that are going unused. Now, I know that I, Ro uh, Robert from, NC, yeah. from Ripe NCC got back to me and um, told me about standing order, which is the, the, the transfer process, mm -hmm. but uh, basically, I don't know, doing something that we, uh, to, to help enable um, those that need those credits that can't get them. Yeah. I, I think that's another way that it could improve the program. Yes, so, so um, to get back to the, the second point first. Sure. Um, for credits, um, if you have a, a need for credits, you can always come talk with us uh, and uh, we're very happy if there's a good reason for it to, uh, to extend any limits. These limits are there to protect the system itself. So without, um, if, uh, too much load on the system would, would uh, uh, have negative consequences to all users, so that's why these, these things are in place. Uh, and so we have means of giving people credits that, uh, that need them. Researchers typically want a lot of credits. Or if people want certain measurements started that are of the general benefit, we typically start them. Um, so that, that's, that's on, the, uh, on the credits part. Um, uh, and the other one was about um, Country uh, the, like what what the tool actually is, and it's 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 a bit um, uh, it's actually two things right now. It's it's uh, uh, a piece of software that mm -hmm. you can actually run, and we run this piece of software monthly for all the, the countries. So if, if I go back um, and oh, no, um, no. Nah. Um, there is a URL here. Uh, yes, this here replaced that last part, and um, we're actively working on making it much, much nicer. Because uh, this, you're you're not the first one uh, making this suggestion. It 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 um, it can definitely use some uh, uh, better interfacing. Another another idea, and forgive me for taking so much time, but another idea might be also to, just for for some of us, to even just have an upload of um, various screenshots, just screenshots of of the of the Jedi of the country Jedi for major IXP routes, uh, whether it be for Europe or Asia or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. I, wherever you think, or in your experience, people are are curious about seeing that that network traffic. Even if we could even just take a a uh, download just one screenshot to include in a presentation or something that would be helpful for me. But okay, yeah, thank you. Okay.
Hi. Hi, I'm Okay, hi, I'm uh, Daniel Kahnberg. I'd like to comment on some of the things that have been said. I think thank you for the very good suggestions, by the way. Um, I think if you want uh, to st sort of strategically uh, improve the user interface of some of the research we're doing, uh, I think you'll have to find some, some allies. I suggest that you find some allies uh, and, um, and use the right process to actually uh, forcefully uh, call out this, uh, this requirement. Um, I think it, it would be, it, it re would require a uh, um, alloca serious allocation of resources inside the NCC to actually make this happen in a, in a structural way. Um, I, I feel a bit of pity with, with Emil here, who, who's a researcher, and shows you research tools uh, being um, sort of asked to have um, a, a good user interface. That's not his job. We actually have, um, we have people whose job it is, and you see the result in ripe stat. But if you want this stuff to, to develop more into a um, nice UI, uh, regular uh, screenshots and, and things like that, I think it shouldn't be uh, Emil's job. Uh, and if, if there's a, genu a, a genuine sort of clearly um, voiced requirement for that by many people, I think the Rob NCC could do that strategically rather than tactically. So here's a suggestion. The other is my usual soapbox, um, sorry, um, about the um, software probes. Uh, I, th I think we have to, to realize that the RIPE Atlas is unique in the sense that the probe population of those 10,000 is relatively homogeneous and their performance is predictable. Um, we have three different versions, but still the performance of these things is, is predictable, so if you do measurements, you can uh, at least quantify um, the, uh, the influence uh, of the environment in which the measurements run. As soon as you virtualize that, you lose it. Um, um, that's, that's one reason why we haven't done it initially. And <clears throat> if, we, if we're going to, and, I, and we've been asked this uh, uh, several, uh, several, for a long time, but please realize that what you measure then, if you use an appliance, is something totally different than what you measure with a hardware device. Um, so we would have to sort of cat categorize those measurements as being different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other is, um, as soon as you um, uh, do things like that, um, there's a reputation risk for the RIPE NCC because you run this stuff on much more powerful hardware and on things that also run other things. And if that, those things get hacked, we get blamed. Yeah. So just realize that as well. So it's not, uh, it's not, many people come to me and say, oh, it's just easy, just make us a, make us a whatever image of your, 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 your preferred virtual environment and it will all be fine. It's, it's a bit more complicated than that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's the delicate balance between also, uh, if you, it's hard to get a probe into a country, uh, people might want to replace that and you get less quality measurements exactly. as a result. So, so my, my, the, other, the last point I wanted to make is, is that exactly that one, um, yes, it's, it's, it's easy to smuggle them, quote, smuggle unquote them into conferences, but the Red NCC actually has the means, um, the, the financial means to import them legally. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just a bit more work and I, th I personally, with my personal hat on, I would prefer uh, to spend an effort there in, in, get, in, in getting them, you know, just ship them you know, and pay the, pay the import duty uh, to the, to the um, ambassadors rather than uh, go for a second class solution. Personal opinion. Okay, thank you. Is that it? Thank you. Okay, thank you.